Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Ben Schubert, and today I want to talk about the Canon C200 RAW. So I finally got my CFast cards. So I ordered this camera and the cards about two months ago. The camera came right away. The cards and my other stuff took a while. So um, I finally got a chance to go out and play with it. Uh, you saw my video last week where me and my daughter, we went out to Queen Elizabeth Park at sunset and just went and hung around. So the day my CFast cards came in, we finally had a nice day, right? It had been raining and cold for a while, a lot of overcast, but that day was clear. And so I wanted to take advantage of it and go see the sunset. So me and my daughter went over to Queen Elizabeth Park real fast and we had about 45 minutes to just shoot whatever. For this, I wanted to test out the dynamic range. So I exposed for the skies and let a lot of things go to shadow, including faces, people, uh, flowers, plants, that sort of thing. And I wanted to really see the dynamic range and just kind of see what kind of look I would get from that. If you haven't had a chance to check out this video, I'm going to do one of those card things somewhere. I don't know where it is. So yeah, go have a look, leave a comment, tell me what you think. So in the end, I really liked the look that came out of this. I thought that the camera did really well in the shadows and even in post, I was able to bring up the shadows more if I wanted to, but I still let them just sit underexposed because I really wanted to see how underexposed played there. And for it, I shot everything at 800 ISO. I mean, people call it the native ISO, but I think 640 is actually considered zero dB gain. Um, but 800 has the most dynamic range. So 800 ISO tends to be considered the default, even though 640 is actually the default, but I don't think it matters. I haven't really done noise tests on this camera yet, but so far everything I've seen turned out really good. The footage looked really clean. I'm really happy with the results. The shadows look great, very happy. So the shoot went really well but things were different when I got home and took the footage and wanted to take it into post. So typically with C200 footage, I've just been converting it into 10-bit ProRes and then editing it and dealing with it in Premiere. And that's been fine for the most part. But what I did differently with this project is that I got really eager and I wanted to play with the footage in DaVinci Resolve. And I was really surprised by how easily and how smoothly the footage played in Resolve as opposed to Premiere. So here's an example of my footage being put into Premiere. So this is the raw footage. It's just put in a timeline that's, you know, specific for that footage and just let to play. And you can see how laggy it is. Uh, it's dropping frames and it's just not efficient. And there's no effects. There's no color grading. There is nothing done to this footage. Now, if I take that same footage and put it into DaVinci Resolve, this is how it plays. And this is how it plays with color grading, with time remapping, and you know, just in general, it plays very smoothly. Now, a lot of my projects are still gonna be shot uh, with the intention of just going to ProRes, right? So this, for instance, I'm shooting this in RAW, but it's just gonna be put into ProRes because I do not need to store this in raw like I really don't it's just a talking head of me but there's a lot of projects where it's going to be a quick turnaround and I think it just would be faster and easier to edit in Premiere and then just export the ProRes after in case I need it in the future so I think I'm going to spend the next 30 days exclusively on DaVinci Resolve so I'm going to put Premiere away um, I'm done working on any premiere based projects I need to do for the next month. I can, I can, all the other projects that I'm doing will be starting from scratch. So I can just move everything over to DaVinci Resolve. No problem. So I'm just going to go from there and, you know, try and do the learning curve that is learning DaVinci Resolve. Now I do have some experience with it. I did edit this last video with it. Um, and I've been color grading with it for years but I haven't really done a lot of the full workflow. So I'm not familiar with things like the short keys and the hotkeys and the shortcuts and the whatnots. 
So for that sort of thing, I'm really gonna have to familiarize myself with those systems because I am really good with Premiere Pro. And this is kind of the same thing that happened with Final Cut. When I started editing, it was on Final Cut 4. And uh, that was the system that I was using until, you know, Final Cut 7. And in that time, I'd gotten really good at using all the shortcuts, all the hotkeys. Uh, when I edit, I use the keyboard more than my mouse. And so knowing the shortcuts is really important. So when Apple finally dropped Final Cut 7 and updated to Final Cut X, I didn't want to change. And the workflow was too different and a lot of the pro features that I was used to just weren't included yet. And it took a couple years for those things to be included. So instead of switching to Final Cut X, I stayed on Final Cut 7 for a while before I switched over to Premiere Pro. And the reason I switched over to Premiere Pro was because they actually used the GPU. And that was really important to me. The ability to use my GPU to speed up the process of editing and speed up my render times, that was great. And I'm really starting to feel like that's happening right now between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. And I hear actually Final Cut is like doing some good things these days. So I'm gonna try that out at some point, but right now I'm really interested in DaVinci Resolve. I also really like that DaVinci Resolve is several awesome programs in one program. So it's not just color grading, it's got a really good sound editor. Um, the editing suite is actually really good. The visual effects suite uh, of Fusion, which is like their version of After Effects, is really powerful. I've seen a lot of really great things done with that. And even the way that files are organized in the beginning is has some really powerful tools there. So for instance, I really like their clone tool. The ability to copy your files from your CFast card to multiple backups uh, is changing my workflow. I'll talk about that in another video, but for now, it's great. Now, I'm often telling people that it's really important to know more than one editing suite. And I say that, but I am also someone who's notorious for not actually backing that up in practice. Um, so I spent the last several years getting really good at Premiere Pro, but I haven't really dedicated any time to Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve. And that's something that I kind of need to work on. So for the next 30 days, we're gonna focus on DaVinci Resolve. And at the end of that, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts and kind of tell you what things I think it does right, where maybe there's some weaknesses, and yeah, we'll just see how that goes. So if you're someone who edits in DaVinci Resolve, please leave comments down below with tips, tricks. Let me know what you like about it, what I should be looking out for, and help me learn it faster, because I would really appreciate that. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and otherwise, I'll see you later.